Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I thought I'd show you guys how I do my budgeting and my finances right before I start filling this in for 2022. I usually do it on the first of every month for the previous month and it's about the middle of January. So I do everything on Excel and to give you guys some background for me, I am actually um, a CPA as well as my husband, we're both accountants, but that doesn't mean that we're like budgeting professionals or that we're, you know, not even saying that we're amazing with money, like just because you're an accountant doesn't mean you're good at tax kind of thing. It's like having your doctor, your your family doctor do like, I don't know, knee surgery on you or something, right? Like it doesn't mean anything. But basically what I want to say is that I guess we are comfortable with numbers and um, we do like to still keep it simple for our budget and finances. So I'm hoping that this maybe could help those of you guys who are just starting and want to start with something simple or those of you guys who have been doing budgeting for a long time and maybe want to simplify it or streamline it or just make it a bit simpler. I've been using this for about two years now and it's really worked well for me um, and I don't find that I need anything overly complex. So hopefully this can help you guys and let's get started. Okay, so on my screen, you'll just see how I set it up in Excel. And really what I do is I just have um, the columns for my budget and I keep it really, really simple. So I just have what I think for the year that I'm going to make in each of my various categories of income as well as expenses, as well as what that means on a monthly basis. And I just divide that by 12. So I just, you know, do a straight line basis. I, I, I don't go in and do a monthly budget. I just find that, that that's not necessarily useful for me or, or required and then um, I track on this side on the right side what the actual amounts are and I'll get into an example and put in some actual numbers but one of the things that um, I do want to highlight is that what's helpful for me for a budget and for my expenses is seeing actual trends so when I have January, February, March, by the time I'm in like October, November, December, or even when I have previous years filled out, I can see what my income looks like month to month. I can see what do my credit card expenses look like month to month. And that way, when there's a spike or a low point, I look at those um, unique months and see what happened in that month. I don't focus necessarily on the absolute number in that month or look at it compare, compared, you know, dissecting it compared to my monthly because I guess I just find that um, month to month you have a lot of recurring similar expenses. A lot of the time, you know, I'm not one to just spend superfluously for no reason. And so dissecting that doesn't really make sense for me. Whereas if I see some months where I'm spiking up and down, that's where you want to investigate and say what happened that month. Okay, so so that's what I do. And maybe it doesn't work for everybody. But um, yeah, so let's get started with an example. So here, I just have the various income sources. And what I would do is I would put uh, mine, my husband's, some of my Etsy, you know, my Etsy shop, for those of you guys who may or may not know. Um, and you know, whatever else I, I put a couple extra spaces for an example in case you guys, you know, wanted to create something similar for yourself or whatever. Um, yeah, so you could do as many as you want. So I'm just going to put in some numbers so you guys can see. So for example, let's just say for, you know, the ease of the numbers, let's just say each, each year I expect my husband's going to make 12,000. I expect that I'm going to make 12,000. Let's say, you know, from my little side hustle, my mommy plans shop on Etsy, I'll make, um, I don't know, what's the easiest number, let's do 6,000. Okay, and let's just call, for most of us, like, we only have a couple sources of income, it could just even be two, it could just be one, if, you know, you're tracking it for yourself, it, it, it can be as little or as many as you need, and so, Let's say I expect that for the year I'm going to make 12000 and that could include, let's say, a bonus or whatever. So it's not necessarily that each month I'll get 1000 So let's say I get 900 in January, 800 in February, 900 again. And, you know, if you work for an employer, sometimes your deductions will fluctuate month to month a little bit as well. Um, once they hit a certain, a certain, <laughs> a certain threshold on certain, 
um, deductions, they might stop deducting those. This is, uh, I'm in Canada, so it might be different for the U.S., but you know what I'm saying. Okay, so let's just fill out a couple of hypothetical numbers, right? And so what I just have here is what is my total um, for the year so far and how much of my budget that is. I find that helpful because depending on when you say, say sometimes you get your bonus in June, sometimes you get it in July, it kind of helps you to gauge where you are at based on what you think you're going to get in the full year. So for example, my husband gets his bonus usually around August. I get my, I'm talking about corporate, corporate bonus in, um, I think it's in March. So it's kind of helpful to know because then you assume that, you know, half the year you get 50% of your income, but let's say if I was the same throughout, sorry guys, I'm using my, my iPad and I'm not used to using this to do this. So, okay, so say this is, you know, my husband's income, we get to July, which is half of the year, and I put in another 900 here, and you would expect it to be about, you know, half of your total budget. Um, that doesn't make sense. Oh, sorry, half the year is June. Okay, so half the year, um, I'm at about 44%, and I haven't quite hit 50%, even though it's 50 even though it's half of the year, right? So that might um, help me to understand that, you know, I'm getting a big lump sum of that of my budget later in the year. Does that make sense? That might have been too complex. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. If you guys don't get it, just let me know down below. But that's why I like to have a percentage of the budget, just to kind of gauge if there are lump sums that I get later on in the year, or beginning of the year, I can keep track of those so I know how much else is coming in for that month. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's what I would just do each month. So each month, you know, I do it at the beginning of the month. So let's go on with the January example, okay? So it's 900. Let's say I got 1,000 here. Let's say I got, you know, 450 here. And I have like kind of a running total of what my January actuals are down here. And I can also easily compare that to what I thought I would get for a month if I just averaged everything out. Um, and that's that. And then in the expenses, I would just track all my credit cards. So I would, you know, I usually pay all my credit cards at the time that I'm doing my um, finances as well. So usually on the first of every month, of course, make sure your, you know, billing cycle or whatever payment cycle is before that. And I would just put in what my expenses were that month. So let's say it's $200. I wish it was only $200. I really do. <laughs> okay. And I don't know how many credit cards you guys have, but let's say you have a few. Um, and I do have a couple because I like to make use of um, the, the points that it's geared towards. So for example, I have an Amazon credit card because I make a lot of purchases on Amazon. And to make use of their point system, I like to have a separate card. Um. I can get into a different video about that if you guys are interested. And then let's say you have your mortgage and we'll just say your mortgage is only 200. I, I wish. <laughs> um, yeah, so I just go down the list and I fill in what my expenses were. Now, how do you get the expense number for each of these items? Of course, the credit cards are easy. I check my credit card statement. The mortgage comes directly out of my bank account. So I have my checking account open as well. And what I do is I sort that to the month that I'm in. So on February 1, I would do January. So I sort the transactions for January 1 to January 30. And I go through each transaction. Because I do all my spending on my credit cards, there's not like little transactions of like $10 here, $3 there, $4 there, right? Because all my expenses go through my credit card. But I do have other things that come directly out of my checking account. So for example, my mortgage would come out of there. If I have property tax that, that month, it will come out of there. It's not usually um, every month. If I have my utility, my utilities come out of there. So let's say $15. Um, you know, I have a couple of different types of utilities, my gas, my hydro, you know, waste, et cetera, et cetera. 
and it would come out of my account. So I just go through and I check every transaction and make sure it's something that I understand. My insurance, okay. So, I mean, these are just make-believe numbers, guys, like obviously. I'm just trying to show you guys as an example. And then for the other, I don't know what else you guys might have, but other, other times, you know, if I go to the green grocer down the street and, you know, they don't take credit card or whatever and I have to use my debit, then I'll go here. Or if... um I don't know, my parents give me a check because they, you know, want me to get something for the girls because they can't see them. I'll um, add it back here. And when I'm adding it back here, I don't put it as a source of income. I just put it as a negative expense. So say they gave me like $10. Then I would put negative 10 so that it would deduct it rather than um, add it as another expense. Does that make sense? It should be pretty straightforward. And this formula is clearly wrong. It should go all the way up to 17, okay, and there you go. So now I have what my total expenses were for January as well as what my income was, and down here I just put net income, which is subtracting my expenses from my income. For my expenses, I do have a section here for the budget. And to be honest, I don't usually set a budget. <laughs> I know a lot of people do. But again, for me and my household, we're both, you know, me and my husband are both relatively conservative spenders. We don't really overspend. So the things, if I want to buy something, I know, you know, I can afford it. I, I know that... Um, it's, it's going to be within, I guess, the budget in my head. For those of you who are just starting out and or who have trouble with managing their expenses, do I recommend that? No, no, no. Do not do that, okay? So what you would do is go in here and put an, an amount for each of your expense categories. Now, for things like mortgage obviously it, it's not really a budget it's just whatever and, and kind of like income too right it's not really a budget like your your mortgage is what your mortgage is your income is what your income is you could use it as like a goal setting for side hustles for example but if you work corporate your income is your income do you know what I mean okay but for the credit cards is really you could set the budget for the year Sometimes I do use this not necessarily for budgeting, but to see where I think we'll land in the year. Now, how do I do that? That's where the trending is really important. And so I'll just take, what did I spend last year in these various categories? And I keep the same categories year over year and I'll fill them in and then I'll have a total expense number. And then I'll come out and say, oh my gosh, I think we're going to be under this year because we had to add my second daughter to daycare or you know I, I think we're planning a trip this year and um, it's going to cost more than last year because of COVID we didn't go anywhere right and so that's just to, to help me see where we'll land in the year it's not something I use as a strict this is what I can spend for the month I hope that makes sense. I always feel like I like blab all over the place but <laughs> feel free to ask me questions down below because I lo love talking about this stuff um, yeah, so then as the month months progress, you will have these all filled in. And again, that's really where all of the um, important data comes in. Because right now, these things don't really mean anything. But when you have all these filled in, and you see, you know, each month, you're usually spending 200 on this credit card, and all of a sudden, you spend 600 you'll see, oh, shoot, maybe I should investigate that, right? Um, so the other thing that I like to do as I'm doing this each month is I keep a section for notes. So in here in May, let's say I spent 600, right? And it's because I know this month I had some unusual expenses, like let's say I, you know, went to the dentist and got a bunch of work done and I pay for that, but my insurance reimburses me for that. I will make a note just on a separate tab and say, you know, title it for that month and just say, this is the additional amount that I spent for, um, you know, the dentist and that I will have gotten that reimbursed subsequently, let's say on the next month or whenever the claim goes through. 
And I just like to note that that way at the end of the year, if I want to take a look at my trending, I can easily go in and see what that unusual trend is. Okay. Does that make sense, guys? I know it's kind of hack. Maybe I should have filled this whole section in with numbers and then showed you, but I didn't want to have you guys bogged down with the numbers and get confused. So I hope that makes it easy. Okay. And these here on the columns here just say NA because I don't have um, a, a budget set there. But if I had a number, it would be like this and it would show me the percentage of the budget. Budget. <laughs> budget. So that would really help those of you who are tracking to an amount, an expense, that, a total um, budget amount of spending that you want to do for the year because then you know say you're you know in June at the half of half year mark and you've already spent 70% of your budget you know that for the end of the year you're going to have to pull back does that make sense guys I hope that makes sense so that's literally all I do and um, if in a month after I do my budget I, or my expense tracking, I see, you know, oh my gosh, I've really spent a lot this month or whatever it is, I'll, I'll just keep it in my head that next month, you know, I got to watch out a little bit or, or if there's anything unusual, um, I'll ask my husband. And what really is important with this, I find, is getting into the habit of doing each month and just making sure you go through each of these steps like going through the bank and checking all of your transactions and making sure that the transactions that normally hit each month are there. So for example, there has been couple, um, months where you know, my husband pays his own credit card, but um, I do the family expenses in terms of this type of tracking and everything. And Normally, I see a line for his payment of his credit card, and I haven't seen it by the first, and he'll say, oh, shoot, I, I forgot to pay it, right? That's the important types of things for me um, to focus on, and it's this high-level view that I think we sometimes forget to stop and look at. If we only are so fixated on the month-to-month, -month, we forget to stop, step back, and see high-level is something not right or something doesn't make sense. Okay, and then I'll just quickly go over this um, balance sheet. BS is not like a bull S H I T. <laughs> it stands for balance sheet. I S is you know income statement. It's uh, it's the accountant and me, but um, balance sheet is really just it, it, it's it's our net worth. Um, so this is obviously financing for our personal finances, not a business. Um, and so this is really where's our net worth. And how I use this is, again, your net worth month to month really isn't going to change unless you get um, some huge, I don't know, an inheritance or the stocks like one of your stocks blows up overnight and, you know, 10x's, 100x's, whatever, right? And you had significant investment in there, maybe that'll change your net worth. But Otherwise, it, it's a slow buildup and it doesn't change much month to month. So I don't necessarily do this every single month. I maybe do it, you know, three times a, I don't know, twice a year, three times a year just to check where we are. It really is to just try to help me remember, to be honest, where some of my money is. Um, and <laughs> if you're wondering how you can forget about your money. So for example, like, you know, I have a TFSA with a little bit of money left over in there. I've, I've moved my money around a lot and it's an account that was um, old and I don't go in there. It's like a thousand dollars in there. Well, I sometimes like, to be honest, I kind of forget about it because I haven't logged in to check that balance forever. So here I just put in, you know, the different, um, assets that I have and the different accounts that I have really just to to remember that it's there so for most of us our house is our, our biggest asset um, but obviously also our biggest liability or um, our, our biggest debt amount so they kind of offset each other and I'll walk you through this if you guys don't um, haven't seen um, a, a balance sheet like this before, don't really understand the concept, I will walk you through it. So at the top, all of your assets is everything that you own. And then at the bottom is your liabilities, which is your loans, you know, the things that you owe, the things that aren't yours, something that you have to pay back. Okay. And then at the bottom, when you take your total assets, minus your liability, 
liabilities, wow, I can't talk, you get to your net assets or your net worth, okay? So let's just say here, I'm doing this for tracking purposes, my house. So it's interesting. With your house, you wouldn't necessarily put down what you bought your house for. You might want to check what your house or your neighbor's house or something that's, you know, a house that's similar to your house has sold in the market recently. And the reason why you do that is if, if you were to sell the house today, how much money would you get for it? And that's really how much your, how much is your house worth, right? How much money um, or assets can your house generate for you? So let's say I sold my house today, I would get $1,000. Dear Lord, that would be awful, wouldn't it? <laughs> Okay, so, you know, and again, don't make it complicated. You don't necessarily have to do this, but it's just something for fun that you could you could do. Um, so let's say my house is worth $1,000. Your car, you know, most people, at least for me, I kind of just drive my car, most of my cars to the ground. I don't expect to resale my, resell my car. Cars are depreciating assets and they really, as soon as you drive it off, you know, the dealership, it's already lost, like a lot of its value. Um, so I wouldn't really put anything in, but maybe you have a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or a vintage car or, or whatever, and it could sell for, for something, right? Um, so there, and then here, I just put in some examples of different types of investments or savings that you might have. Maybe you have investment property, stocks, your TFSA, your RESP, your RSP. ESAP is your employee share plan. So, you know, if you work corporate or whatever, and um, the company company allows you to buy their their stocks. Um, that's called an employee share share. Is it employee share accumulation plan or something like that? I can't remember exactly what it stands for, but that's what that is. And so you would just list each of those below, and um, then I know a lot of you guys, and I see. Um, this mentioned in a lot of videos sometimes when I watch when I watch YouTube videos, planner videos, people talking about sinking funds. And I've actually never heard of that. I don't know if that's like a US thing or what like I've literally never encountered that term until I, you know, joined the planner community. So let me know down below. But based on my very basic research, it's um really just putting aside money for um, either an emergency fund of some unexpected event or um, let's say you're planning to change your washer or planning to change your dryer. Or, I don't know, planning to change something. This is what you're saving for and you're putting money into this account um, each month. Does that, is that right? <laughs> anyway, so that is, that's, that's your assets, right? That's money. That's, um, something you have it's kind of like a savings basically i would just consider that a savings but if you guys call that a sinking fund um yeah whatever you guys want to classify it as so you could add that there and after you do all that you would get to your total assets now on the other side you obviously will have the stuff that you owe so for example um your mortgage is your biggest amount so let's say you know oops your house is worth a thousand dollars but you owe $500 to the bank on your mortgage. So you need to add that, right? Um, and then let's say you have other loans. Maybe you did a renovation. Maybe you, um, I don't know, have student loans or whatever. Then you would add those there, of course. And then if you have credit card, unpaid credit card balances that um, you only pay the minimum minimum amount each month, then you would add it there, guys. Please do not borrow through your credit card, aka please do not have unpaid balances on your credit card. The interest rates are like just unbelievable. They are unreal. Like, oh my gosh, don't do it. Um, yeah, I could talk more about that in a in a different video, but um, yeah, don't do it, guys. But if you do, if you do, no judgments. But you know, some people, if you if you have to, and that's the only form that you can only way you can, you know, get a loan, then, then sometimes you have to do that. And so you add those there, et cetera, et cetera. And then afterwards, you would take your assets minus your liabilities, and that's your net worth. Is this valuable to, you know, fixate on this net worth number? No, <laughs> absolutely not, right? Um, but it can be motivating to see that number go up 
you know, every, how many ever periods. Don't do this every month, guys. Like your house value from January to February won't go up that much. Your investments probably, you know, won't go up that much month to month, right? It's all about the long game. So maybe if you look at the beginning of the year versus the end of the year, maybe there'll be a bit of an uptick and that'll, that'll be motivating or exciting to see. Um, so that's how I use this. Really, I just keep it as a way to track my different um, areas of savings and where different things are. Because sometimes I do forget, like I, the other day, I totally forget, forgot about the money that's accumulated in my ESAP. You know, I forget that we have RESPs for our two girls. Like that is money that you, that is tr- like real money, right? Like um, sometimes, especially, you know, after having kids, I focus on, oh my gosh, we have to have, you know, money set aside for emergencies or what about the girls, you know, going to school in the future? Or what if they go to Harvard? Like, you know, all the money that we need for that. And I forget that each month we, each month, we each year we contribute to RESPs and that money will build and, you know, your RESP for your retirement and different things will build as the years go on. So sometimes it's just a, a nice reminder to see the things that, that you have. So I hope you guys found that helpful. This is a little bit off of what the normal um, planner videos are like, but I really, really do love talking about, you know, personal finances and numbers and that kind of stuff, even though I'm not a budgeting professional. And um, yeah, so I hope you guys found that helpful. If you guys want to see more of this type of video or whatever else you guys want to see, let me know down below. I have been asking you guys on my Instagram as well. If you guys follow me there, it is just mommy plans, which is the the same as my YouTube handle. And I'll uh, see you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.